All right, so this year I was lucky enough that the Celtics made it all the way to the NBA Finals, and I was able to shoot games three, four, and six at TD Garden, and I'd love to show you how it went. So first off, I was shooting for USA Today Sports Images, and there were actually three photographers, and we had two editors at all the games. So this made it a lot easier for me to not have to worry about editing and captioning the photos, and I could just focus on the action and get those keeper images to the editors. Now after getting to the game three hours early, having some dinner, checking all my gear, making sure everything's working smoothly, it was time to focus on the action. So for game three, I was shooting from way up top in the building, uh, level nine or something like that. Now shooting up there doesn't seem like the most distinguished position, but it's very necessary. It's a pretty safe spot. You get an unobstructed view of the court, so you can get most of the plays. I was a little bit in the corner, so the basket kind of you know, blocked off a little bit of the court, and there was a little bit of glare in some spots. But you know, there's nothing you can do about some of those things, so you just got to shoot. Now, shooting up this high means I was using a 400. Even that was like a little bit loose, nothing crazy. It was still great to use. So after using the 400 most of the time, got a couple wide shots with 70 to 200, or really wide with a 16 to 35. Uh, but I didn't really use those lenses when I was up that high because there's just not much to get after you get kind of one scene setting image. Now once I got the images I wanted to send them to the editors, I actually had a mobile hotspot plugged into my 1DX and I could just send the images straight from the camera to a folder on the editor's computer and then they could you know, pick which ones were the best, make sure they were sharp, make sure they were cropped well, caption them, and upload them. And now by the end of the game, the three photographers and the two editors would get out about 200 images. So again, these images aren't the most dynamic from up top, but you get a great view of most of the plays that are happening. And you can still get some really good angles on certain types of plays where people are diving on the court or looking up, you know, doing layups, things like that. Uh, you can still get some great images from up high. Now for games four and six, I actually didn't have a designated photo position. I just kind of had to roam around the stands a little bit, find a location that I liked and that would be mostly unobstructed from fans and where I wasn't obstructing fans views. So it's kind of hard to figure out because there's also 25 to 30 other photographers roaming around trying to find spots. So if someone was already in one, kind of had to go move to the next one. Now a lot of these positions are generally the entrances into the stands because most of the time it's only an usher or someone standing there. You can kind of lean up against the wall, shoot down onto the court, and as long as the fans aren't standing up and cheering, you have a pretty clear view of the court. Now I found this slightly different position which just, I don't know why this little section was there, but it was a perfect spot for me. I could kind of stand there, not really obstruct any fans, and had a great view of the court. Even if people were standing, I could kind of shift over a little bit and still shoot down the court and get a lot of the action. Now, if I was blocked, that's you know why we have three shooters. If I'm blocked, hopefully the other two, or at least one of the other two has a shot. We had one on the floor, one really up high like I was in game three, and then one in the stands moving around a little bit. When shooting the stands, I was shooting with my 400 again. And then I would also use my 70 to 200 a lot because the 400 was very tight. If the action was closer to my end of the court, I couldn't really get full body shots. And you know, I'd miss certain plays if they're gonna go up really quickly, or if you know, there's two guys, I may not be able to get both guys in the frame very easily. So I'd switch to the 7200 for you know, a quarter and shoot that way, just so I get a different variety of images where during the first half I might do the first quarter with the 400 and the second quarter with the 70 to 200. So to send images this time, I didn't want to lug around the mobile hotspot with me, so we had card runners, which that's a real thing. People standing there next to me, I'm tagging my images in the camera, the ones that I think are good enough so that the editors don't have to sort through all of my images, they can just look through the tagged ones. I take that, take that card out of my camera, pass it to the card runner, get another card, put it back in, go back to shooting. They run the card down to the editors, editors download it on their computers, card runner runs back up to me, we switch cards, just keep going in that cycle. So unfortunately I didn't get to shoot from the floor in any of these three games, but that's just how it goes when you're working with a team of people, you know, you take what you're assigned and you make what you can from it. 
And there were so many photographers just there shooting the game and so many outlets shooting the game that there's only a few positions actually on the court that pretty much everyone was only getting one, maybe two quarters to actually shoot on the court. And everyone was just rotating for, I know USA Today would either have the second and fourth quarter or the first and third quarter in their designated photo position. I was fortunate enough to shoot the Eastern Conference Finals and I got to shoot on the floor that one game I shot. And again, it was just two of the four quarters. So here's a couple images you can see the difference in sort of what you're gonna get on the floor versus what you saw from way up high earlier and what I'm getting in the stands. And then when I'm not shooting on the floor in that game, I'm actually just going back into the stands. So because there's all this media there, they are very restrictive about who can actually shoot on the court or be down at court level. So I could only really be out there pre-game and warm-ups and then they'd kick you out and you have to go up into the stands or up to your shooting position up high. Instead of really just trying to keep working my way onto the court just to shoot warm-ups, which to be honest, we don't use those images a ton, I instead saw Curry shooting around and knew that he was gonna walk back into the locker room. So I went and planted myself along that tunnel where he's gonna walk from the court back to the locker room so I could get just a wide shot of him walking by. So I'd just get over there five to 10 minutes before I thought he was gonna come out and just kind of camp out in my spot, make sure I get there before other people do. Now, because I did this in game three and four, game six, I was like, oh, let me try something different. I brought a flash with me, uh, got this image and put the shutter down really slow, got a little drag in the lights behind, a little blur, and then used the flash to kind of freeze Curry in the frame. And I just wanted to get something different. I had gotten the other images, the other games. So game six, the Warriors actually ended up winning the whole series. And so they had an award presentation after the game. So in that case, I had to run and get to center court, still up in the stands to be able to shoot directly into the ceremony. When I got there, unfortunately, I noticed that like the sky cam on wires is flying around and it would be up really high, it would go really low. The cords are in the frame, sometimes the camera was in the frame, and sometimes it was up high and it was clear. And so I knew kind of like, wherever I'm gonna go, I'm not really gonna know if this thing's gonna fly in front of my shot. So I just kind of stayed in the center. I moved up and down a couple rows just to see if I could get a clearer shot. Um, but unfortunately it was in a lot of the images and that's again why we have three photographers that best image we actually had of Curry holding up the trophy and celebrating was from the ninth floor um, because they're shooting straight down. It was over top of that little sky cam and ended up being sort of the best image we got from that trophy celebration. So shooting on the ninth floor, right? Sometimes seems bad, but you're also sometimes gonna get the best image, the best vantage point that's different from everyone else's. So then the awards, you know, going on, players are celebrating, getting pictures, different groups. And, you know, I see them all walking back through the tunnel to the locker room and Curry and Clay are staying out extra long just to continue celebrating. And I figured, you know what, let me go over towards the tunnel and shoot Curry coming off of the court and I can kind of shoot down. It was like packed with people and I just thought it could be a cool image. So ran over there with the card runner uh, behind me five minutes later. Curry starts walking off the court. He's got his MVP trophy in his hand, cigar in his mouth, the finals cap on. He's walking off, holding it up, and great image, just like shooting away, just holding the shutter down. I got lucky, and someone else had a flash go off. I caught it in one of my images, so it lit up actually Curry's face under his hat and just gave it a little bit more of a dynamic image, and it's honestly one of my favorite photos I got from the entire series. Reminds me that, all right, it's good to sort of take those chances of like, you know what, this may be a photo, this may not be a photo, but I'm very happy I ended up actually like jogging over towards that part of the arena and getting one of my favorite photos. Now I'll never forget shooting these finals. It was an amazing experience. It's just cool to be in the building when this history is being made. It's Curry's, you know, first finals MVP and he's going down as you know one of the best players to ever play the game and shooting that you can just tell like you can see when you're shooting just how great of a player this guy is and it's amazing just to be able to witness that as a fan uh, but also to be able to make great pictures and have those lasting sort of memories things that i can print out put on my own walls is a is an amazing thing and i'm just super excited the celtics made it to the finals so that i was able to shoot here in boston and hope they continue winning 
in the next couple years so that I can keep shooting the playoffs. I hope you enjoyed that look into shooting the NBA Finals, and see you next time.